a bit of pre-game banter for uh-huh. uh, for the side of BI and uh, looks like we have a pretty exciting game on our hands. Look, look this, at this. this is what I really love about uh, mm-hmm. the council, right? They're one of those teams that has so much camaraderie and they're not afraid to show it. We saw something similar from the CSGO squad, Risky Gaming, the hustle, the huddle up, the screaming, all of that. It's something that I think the Indian scene lacks, but let's see if the council can put their money where their mouth is and actually take down no chance. Yeah. He is considered India's best captain as on date and he's considered one of India's most formidable support players as well. Yeah, but uh, let me not forget to mention that uh, no chance himself he said that the council is their biggest opponent in this tournament. So, uh, that is not something that he would say just out of the blue. Uh-huh. Obviously, he's done his research on the council and he knows that they're a very, very strong team. So, let's not take anything away from the council. They've given us some, some exciting games, some really good games. They, they actually knocked down uh, invisible wings into the lower bracket. So, so, some fun facts about the council. Turns out... Uh well, there's actually mixed opinions. People say they've been practicing a lot. They say they haven't been practicing at all. Closer claims, their offlaner closer claims that uh, he actually came up against No Chance in a matchmaking game, ganked the hell out of him, and then typed at the end of it, Mercy in India, please. Let's hope, uh, le- you know, let's hope he was just trolling us. Let's hope they are a well-prepared team, or as well-prepared as we've been led to believe. But we are jumping into the draft. The first man's going to be the tinker here from the council, while Beyond Infinity bans out the Ricky. They're not worried about letting the Chen slip through. That is B- the council's signature hero. Yeah, and we were speaking to the guys at uh, council before the game started. And uh, we learned quite a bit. They said, the, the mid laner said that he only plays Kai at Mage. I don't know if you believe that, but uh, that is something they do <laughs> pick up. They, have, they pick that up almost every game here. So I mean, he was... I don't believe it. Of course we don't believe it. He was banned out... Uh, at uh, Challenger Cup number two, Orampo banned out the Skyrat Mage and the Chen as their first two bands, believe it or not. And Council still came out on top, but here we go. Chen, the first pick, no hesitation whatsoever, but this isn't a slip up on the side of Beyond Infinity. I'm pretty sure it's not. They know, they know that this Chen was going to come out and they definitely have something prepared for it. I'm surprised that they chose to ban out the Ricky, considering the Ricky is one of the better picks versus the Chen himself. Yeah, but again, the way the Council run the Chen is not that. Uh, sitting in the jungle, farming away, farming to, your, farming to your mech, farming to your arcanes. That's not the way the council run the Chen. They run it on the lane. He'll be in the lane, he'll be up in your face at 4 minutes, 3 minutes. And then what are you going to do? Then the Ricky won't really come off help. So no, ch- uh, no chance realizes that that's the way Chen is being run by the council. And uh, he should have a game plan ready for this. Absolutely. One of his game plans has included a Night Stalker running behind the Chen every now yeah, and then. Absolutely. We've also seen him pick up uh, Enchantress on occasion. So, Council, if Council runs the Chen, we know that Beyond Infinity has been running the Chen in the past as well. We've seen No Chance run it. You've seen Swifty running it in the past. They definitely have a lot of versatility, versatility in their ranks. But they are dipping in into their reserve time now by quite a margin. Just one minute left on the clock for them to take the decision on their first two picks. What's it going to be for Beyond Infinity's opening duo? Um, I think they want to counter the Chen right off the bat. They want to make sure that the Chen doesn't get the support that he needs. They want to put something down so that the Chen realizes that he is going to be countered and then they're forced to adjust their draft so that Beyond Infinity gets some leeway in the draft. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, there we go. I was just about to call out the Mirana being as one of the better picks versus the Chen. The Arrow's ability to instantly take down the Chen's creeps makes her a very useful tool indeed. Now, whether this is going to be a support Mirana or a core Mirana is yet to be seen. But uh, it also puts a big question mark on the position of that Slara. On any other day, we'd have said this is an off-lane Slara, but we've seen Beyond Infinity run no chance on that support Slara just yesterday. So perhaps uh, this, is some, this is a curveball being thrown at the council, but the council gets sanking. A hero that's been banned almost every single game. I think he was banned in every single game Against of the them. ESL India Premiership yep. today. Absolutely. And... Uh, yeah, I like what No Chance is trying to do. He picks up the Slara and the Mirana. He's not giving away too much, but he's given he's a strong pick to the council. That That's for sure. Let's Trust see what, in No Chance if you're a Beyond Infinity back. fan. He knows what he's doing. The council, however, straight arrows they are. They're just going to go forward with the strat that's being handed to them on a silver platter, really. Batrider is the second ban out from them, so that's also been a standard ban coming out from everyone. Radiant You've got the Morphling being removed back. from the pool now. The council still have something up their sleeves here, and it might just be a Skyrath Mage at the middle lane. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, I believe this is a four position Slara because currently it's ne- Negi who's playing the offlane of Beyond Infinity, and I don't seem to recall him running that hero. He runs a different Five set of heroes, not the remaining. usual offlaners all the time. He runs the Omni Knight, yeah. he runs the Sand King definitely, but that's not there this game. Reserve time. What else can he run? I think he runs the Timbersaw as well. 
Slara is something I've not seen him on, so I'm yeah, going I to have seen to him on the Slara, but I'd have to assume that he knows how yeah. to do it. <laughs> Absolutely, but ah, oh, there it is. No chance. Not going to leave too many things to chance here. He will ban out the Skyrat Mage. And uh, now the council are going to have to pick up a new, a fresh middle laner. Something we haven't seen in a while from them. Okay, no chance. Respecting the Skyad Mage pick coming out from the council. Bans it out and for the first time I think this tournament we'll see a new mid being played by the council. Yeah. yeah, I'm wondering if... Uh, I mean, okay, does it really make sense to ban out the Skyad Mage? On one hand it's not very meta so the ban may not be entirely justified but on the other hand it fits right into the council's Radiant comfort zone. Beyond Infinity is probably thinking, hey, you know what, we've got to basically break their groove, we've got to break their confidence, get them out of their own comfort zone and play them on our turf. The best way to do that is ban out the heroes they're most comfortable with, but is the Skyrath Mage really even going to be a drop in the ocean Ten after the Chen and the Sand King have gone the way of the council? Yeah, and the council, Five the seconds, fact that they pick main. Chen generally makes the other team think that it's going to be a pushing lineup, but that's not how they run it usually. They run it as a face rusher. They yeah. run it as someone who can uh, use the creeps to tank up the dives that they have in, in the early game. They don't even use it to push that yeah, effectively. They actually give the Chen farm priority on many occasions. So It's a very different style of playing Chen, but it's also a style that deserves and justifies a lot of commitment upon him in the Ten jungle from his opponents. But BI, again, they're just picking heroes that can deal with the Chen. The paralyzing cast, great versus remain. the army of creeps that the Chen brings to the table, but is it really the best choice here, assuming this is the support Mirana? Uh, I don't know if it's the best choice, but I remember Zedis Buck playing it. Uh, he played it in the one of the matches in this tournament and he completely crushed people with it. He got a solo kill on the enemy uh, off laner, just uh, playing the Witch Doctor. So he's Radiant pretty, pretty good on that hero and it's one of his signature heroes as well, this and the Lion. So why not? Why not give, uh, give Zedis Buck his Witch Doctor? It's great against the Chen, it works with the lineup. So they do pick it up. So the subtle undertone of the council's lineup is uh, an, in, in, an innate healing Ten ability seconds, here. Remain. You've got the healing ward from the Juggernaut to sustain the push. You've got the Chen with the Hand of God, the Sendbacks from Chen, a mech perhaps on him as well. Does BI recognize this Omni and pick up an Ancient Apparition? No, they don't. They'll get themselves a healer as Dyer well. Team. The Omni Knight coming into the fray. I now believe it's going to be the uh, position 3, the offlane Om Omni Knight, while No Chance himself has to take a reins of the Slada here. The council, they pick up the Juggernaut. The carry was telling us that Juggernaut is the only carry he plays. Yeah. So a, lo a lot of uh, misinformation. That's not true. They're That's just, not true. They think we're biased, so they're probably going to try and throw Five us off guard. But nah. Little do they know, we're just hoping to get some good Dota here. But yeah, VI now has the opportunity Reserve to get themselves time. that disgusting OD and Omni duo. Uh, the council would do well to ban Lion. it out here. They will get themselves the line, so it's a deterrent Indian towards any illusion-based lineups, but of course there's no space for illusion lineups here on yeah. BI, unless they were planning on a Naga Siren. No, I don't think so that would have been the case. Naga Siren, you don't really pick that hero with Omni Knight. There's no synergy whatsoever. Yeah, I don't see the synergy with yeah, the Omni Knight so I, Naga. I don't think they would have picked Naga Siren. Ten seconds, really? Blizzard does play it. Uh, since it's Blizzard's hero, which is left, he has a very wide pool, but much of it has been banned out. Morphling is one of his signature heroes, has been banned out. Slark is also something he plays. I mean, it's debatable whether or not this is actually Blizzard's hero, right? Because we've seen him run the core Mirana on the one position on, in the past. While Swifty has been playing it more often, I think Beyond Infinity are in a position where they could switch gears very easily. Yeah, uh, very surprising to see that uh, it is the Pro Ranger which has made, made its way all the way through the... Uh, nine bands, maybe it will get banned out, maybe it won't, but surprising to see that it has been in the pool for so long. Yeah, but Generally, it's one of those heroes which do, does get picked up or at least banned out. Yeah, I gotta agree with you. Oh, Viper ban, we're looking Ten at a possible Templar remain. Assassin here for BI. There's the council, recognize this and ban out the TA Five themselves. The but armor did they need to do that? Really because they do have the last pick. Reserved. Banning out the Viper means that they want, to, they want to give out this information that they're going to pick Templar Assassin. I mean, so, if the council wants to throw a curveball here, they pick up the TA themselves. Yeah, they definitely can and it, Heck, it's not bad with the lineup. Yeah, it's absolutely good. But I still think that they'd want something more teamfight heavy because they have the Sand King. They need a little bit of a setup for him. That's probably something that they will look at. Something with a little AoE. Mm, timber saw is an option. They could go with the Timber. Uh, and OD fits right into their draft as well. Odi, Timbersaw, uh, Templar Assassin, all top tier picks in my opinion. We have a Storm team. band coming out. So what does this indicate? Do they want to let this Templar Assassin through? That doesn't seem or like a very good idea. Themselves. They have to know that this is coming, right? 
Maybe that or we're overthinking this. Viper could just have been a potential mech carrier for the council on the middle lane. Because we know that the Chen likes to rush the Aghanim no, Scepter. So I don't think the mech is a standard build on the Viper anyway anymore. It is the... It is the Dragonlance build that's... I mean, it's favorite. situational, right? Because Viper could still be utility without, with or without the mech, right? But I mean, is, with or without the Dragonlance. Is mech even one of those items that is rushed anymore? It's, it's fallen out of favor of a bit, I would say. There was this time when the mech timing was the most important time in the game, but yeah. that doesn't seem to be the case in this patch. And this patch has been there for quite a while now. I mean, this patch has multi-patches inside it as well. It's been it's been going on for so long. Yeah. Teams have been developing their own meta. I mean, a team like BP pulls out the Shadow Fiend when no one's even thinking yeah, about it. They pull out stuff like Support Weaver. Who does that? I don't, I don't even. And would you believe it if I told you that it's the Warlock which has also made Thanks. its way... Not yeah. picked, not banned. A new meta I mean, being forged right no here at the ESL India Premiership. It's going to be the clinks from the council. A, a hero we haven't ever seen them play. Do you like Do you like clinks? Clinks is going to be the one position, if I'm not mistaken. And Juggernaut will be on the mid lane. Yeah, I think that's the case here. But it's a no-brainer for uh, Beyond Infinity. No, it, it is going to be... The Templar Assassin. It's going to be clinks on the mid lane, if I'm not mistaken. Because Deaths is the carry player. Yeah, it, it is a one position juggernaut while Clinks in the Prepare mid lane, uh, it's it's not the ideal situation. I don't really like that. Oh, doesn't have a lot of lane control to pick off. Right. Do you think it'll work out? I don't know, man. I mean, this is a really confusing order of affairs, to be honest. I can't quite tell if this is going to be beyond infinity taking the game or if it's going to be the council. But whatever it is, it's going to be an absolutely exciting state of affairs. Okay, no chance has done his thing. He's already blocked out two camps in the jungle of the council. Do you think Chen, is Chen prepared for this? Yeah, he absolutely is. He has two sentries. Let's see if he can get uh, get a D ward on those, on those two blocked camps here. Meanwhile, go YOLO or go home. Gonna drop down that one observer ward already on the sidelines here. Meanwhile, in the jungle on the dire side, looks like they're just going to get that bounty rune on the top lane and be content with it. No real contest coming out towards the bottom side either. But let's take this opportunity to do a quick introduction of both sides. On the radiant side, you've got Beyond Infinity. Neji will be handling the Omni Knight. You've got Witch Talker in the hands of Go Yolo or Go Home. Or I assume is that is Bug. Blizzard will be handling that Mirano. Swifty on the Templar Assassin and no chance on that support slot up. Okay, for the side of the council, we have Animal, who is the captain, playing the... Uh, playing the support lion, we have Jin who plays an exemplary Chen, uh, playing the Chen, of course. And we have Deaths, who's the one position, playing the Juggernaut. We have Gayun, who's playing the Klinks. And we have Closer, who is the offlaner on that Sand King here. Alright, Sand King on the offlane. You've got uh, a dual lane on the top with the lion as well as the Juggernaut. It's going to be a moving or rotating Chen, who's starting off inside his, near his secret shop. There's no way for Beyond Infinity to uh, contest the Chen in the early game here. I don't think we're going to see a Witch Doctor or a Slada giving chase upon him. Which is why it's really going to boil down to whether or not BI can counteract the Chen's mid-game rotations. And we've seen Jin on that Chen. His mid-game rotations are almost nearly always on point. Yeah, I really feel for the Sand King though. They are going on him as well. I think it's going to be a kill. It is the Mirana who's going to secure this kill. There is a last minute use of the Fairy Fire but it's not enough to help them secure. Okay, we actually miscalled it a little bit. It is Blizzard who's playing the carry uh, Mirana while Swifty. He's on the mid temper assassin here. Let's have a quick look at how Negi is doing. He's one of the uh, he's one of the more flamboyant off laners in my opinion. He he does a lot of flashy plays. He tries to be really aggressive with the zero, and he comes out successfully as well. Meanwhile, in the bot lane, they've gone in on the Sand King again. It's going to be second day that. He has a lot of health to work with. He's trying to get a return game on no chance. The Chen has rotated in as well. Can Blizzard run him down? He can. He misses the arrow though. They're trying to get a kill on Blizzard, but it's just not going to work out. Chen, meanwhile, has been gone on as well. He's going to lose a lot of creeps, if nothing else. Yeah, more no than chance. anything, I think it was annoying for the Chen to lose up all the creeps. That's a lot of extra money in EXP going in favor of Dyer's Beyond Infinity. Tower. The fight recap shows us that uh, it was a minor goal swing because the death of the Witch Doctor does stem the bleeding a little bit. But uh, it is the council on the receiving end of the blows for now. A soldier's fortune. Yeah, something we didn't quite talk about. This is an offlane Omni Knight. He's getting uh, jumped upon right now, but Deaths can't get in range for the Blade Fury just yet. Um, Neji, he's 
probably going to be fine for the most part here. No. He, he does have a creep wave coming in as well. He's playing it smart. He's held on to his second skill point because he knows if he gets gone on, he can use the repel. But uh, he doesn't want to overcommit and get it as well. So he picks up the purification finally. Go Yolo or go home. He's uh, just doing what he can to try and zone out closer down at this bottom lane. Sand King is... I mean, he's getting his, his job done. He's got himself about level 2 right now with the Mango sitting in the stash. So they can make a play if the Chen finds a successful rotation. But it's really difficult when you've got no chance hanging in the vicinity uh, along with uh, an occasional Witch Doctor. Yeah, but looks like B.I. were completely prepared for this though because no chance. He would have seen the game which uh, the Council ran before. And uh, they were completely prepared for this uh, for this Jin Chen who makes these very early rotations into the enemy safe lane. He was right. there, he was prepared for the Slardar. They are going in on Jin again. You got that Chen getting stunned up. Arrow will flip him as well. Is that a sign for them to go right into the fray? They are thinking about it. Malediction connects as well. There's the crush. Chen's been stunned up and Chen is going to meet his maker. That hoof sounds not going to do nearly enough to get them out of here as Sand King's now going to make a run for it. He's heading up towards the north. Inside the trees, the crush will tag him as well. Blizzard turns around and makes a run for it, knowing that he's easy prey if the Parasite connects, but it will be the Witch Doctor that blocks him in to secure the fourth kill of the game for Beyond Infinity. I must point out that Zerisburg has had an outstanding tournament. He's, he's making these big plays with the Witch Doctor, initiating on the enemy. And it's, it's just working out so well. The cast bounces beautifully between the Chen and his creeps and... Uh, it has so much value. Just goes to show why no chance picked the hero for him. Yeah, they have anticipated where this Chen is going to be focusing beyond, in, on beyond infinity and... Uh, clearly, they've managed to shut him down for now. Four minutes in, four and one, beyond infinity in the lead. As far as CS goes, 50 is leading the charts to 27. Meanwhile, in the jungle, again, no chance gonna... Find Jin here, but he's gonna have to turn and run. That DD rune is not nearly enough to duke it out. Maybe he it is. He wants to get that. He wants to get this dark rip, dark troll summoner, but oh, there it is. Zeris Bucks comes and steals the creep. Those cast so damn annoying when there's creeps on the battlefield. Jin, he's still just at level three, but uh, he it has come at the cost of some of Closer's EXP. The Sand King also sitting at level three for now, but, though. However, Blizzard's Mirana is now up to level five, and with that. He's also getting a decent amount of farm going his way. 23 CS to his name. Now, one, thing we've com uh, one lane we've completely overlooked is the mid lane where uh, it's been pretty standard. Swifty is uh, dominating a little bit, but uh, Klingsy, he's trying his level best. He's not the best uh, laner, at, at least not anymore. And especially against the against Swifty's Marana, he's, he's not having the best time, but uh, he's there. He's doing his thing. He's losing out on last hit though. He's quite a bit behind. Oh, well, close to 10. Ned being a complete pest here on the top lane. He does get hit with that Earth Spike. But he's still duking it out. He has a mango if he wants that sudden burst of mana for the clarification. Look at this. He's single-handedly bullying out a Juggernaut and a Lion. And now Lion's in trouble. The crush comes out. The mango's used. The purification there. An animal will be brought down as well. Blade 2 is coming out. But the repel is there upon no chance. Death now in trouble himself. No chance has a crush. Doesn't get it off. The physical hit from the Juggernaut will seal the deal. Giving that some sort of a recovery there in this top lane. Yeah, a little bit unlucky there for no chance. He just, just barely missed out on that crush there. Meanwhile, that middle lane, you've also got an attempt onto the Klinks' life. He will be going down. It's the malediction that seals the deal. Templar, meanwhile, getting hexed up, but there's a brick creep wave under her tower, so no real threat for her life. Is it just me, or is, has, does Zerisberg play better since he's announced his retirement? <laughs> he's sitting at 4, 1 and 1 at 6 minutes in. Yeah, when, <laughs> when has Zerisberg ever been this far? It's the pressure of him having to earn his pension fund post-retirement, man. He's, won, he's already won one major tournament in the Indian scene. He's en route to winning another one, and this is post-retirement. Well, looks like he might have to hold off on his decision. A quick peek at the graphs will reveal that Beyond Infinity have taken the lead. They're about 1500 net worth ahead for now. And uh, the EXP in a similar boat right now. How's Blizzard looking in terms of farm? He's managed to get himself a decent amount of CS, 31. He has had plenty of pressure upon him. But he's got his core Radiant items, the initial core items at least, in the form of the Magic Stick and the Ring of Aquila. This will yeah. be a base trip. Radiant they are hunting him, but he, he's fortified. made a safe retreat out of the lane. He's going back to the fountain. Yeah. When in doubt and you've got a Chen on your lineup, try and push and that's exactly what Jin and Closer are going to do on this bottom lane. However, no chance. Going to make his presence felt up top, sticking around Neji, hoping that Neji gets jumped upon. It's a hard kill though. This Juggernaut is not the easiest target to take down. 
I, I don't think this is the this skill will be possible because uh, that's he he does have that blade free and he's not getting baited out with it, so it'll be difficult for no chance to get that crush on him. They here need to comes. be careful because there there are rotations, there are TPs which are uh, being held onto by by at least the Sand King has it. The ten creep army has uh, been amassed here and they are going to start pushing through. Blizzard probably going to consider firing off a couple of arrows to get those extra neutrals under his belt. Right, what a hex! Looks like we all seeing an initiation on the middle lane. Swifty going to meld himself right in the center of the lane. There's no sentry walls to scar him out. He will be okay. Rookie mistake there from the side of the council. Trying to gank a Templar Assassin without Meanwhile, true sight. Back at bottom, aggressive maneuvers coming out from the council. The paralyzing cast going to be sent across there. Blizzard fires an arrow. Jin will actually tank up the arrow, not willing to sacrifice his creep. There's the bar strike. He's gone in deep, but the malediction is connected on him. Now this is trouble for Closer. He's going to have to make a run for it. Blizzard doesn't even hesitate to leap forward, but he doesn't have the arrow just yet. It should be cooling down shortly. He's going to have to fire it off. It will fly on the creeps for now. They'll be content to bring down the Chen's army. But, even though it isn't a hero kill for Blizzard and his boys, they will be able to get a lot of money on the back of this. The arrow will fly. Is he gonna find the mark? Jin gonna sidestep just barely, but it doesn't matter. Because Neji slowed him down enough to kill him with the purification. The council, they're just melting right now here in the bottom lane. As Beyond Infinity rotates pretty much everyone except for No Chance to Slaughter to secure that kill. Yeah, looks like Beyond Infinity, they've completely read the council's book. And they've, they've been countering this Chen from the get-go. They've, they've got his number at each and every moment of the game. Right, has no chance looking in the gold department. He's got himself about uh, 420 gold for now, so... Quite a ways to go till he gets that blink dagger online. He's chosen to go for the infused raindrops. He's gonna be active on the map even without that dagger, however. I mean, it's a four-position slaughter. It's not, it's not that usual three-position slaughter, so... Blink that timing is gonna be a bit delayed. And uh, that is something we can expect. Meanwhile, at mid, again, this time Swifty was holding on to the task. They'll make quick work of the Clinks once more. And man, has this Clinks been shut down. His net worth is further behind Neji on the off lane. And it's even further behind everyone else. All the cores on the side of Beyond Infinity. Uh, mid Clinks just doesn't work anymore. It, will, it was never a hot pick in the first place. And the fact that the Council did choose to pick it means that uh, they, they've fallen quite a bit behind on that hero. Not even sure what, this, what the idea was to uh, with the clinks. Did they want the early level six and then want to rotate him out of the lane? But uh, yeah, it's just just not working out. Yep. Blizzard, meanwhile, how's his progress looking in terms of items? Is he making his way towards that Aghanim scepter? He's got himself uh, just the face boots and the ring of a killer for now, along with the bottle. It's a while before he gets the full Ags online. Another crucial factor is going to be the blink timing on that Sand King, but Sand King's in trouble once more. Death Ward even channels, they're not hesitating to go in for this. Double Star Storm, going to connect, and it might just be enough. I think the Malediction's going to take him down, especially if they can connect a Wild Arrow upon him, but... No, Close is going to be fine. He will get out of there. Yeah, unfortunately Blizzard was a little bit late, and Zedis Buck just jumped the gun a little too quickly there. So, that can certainly didn't work out, but... Look at what the Council are doing there. They're combining up in the jungle. They have used the smoke of deceit. Jin does, does have his army with him as well. Yeah, it's a good time to go with the smoke as well because they've got himself the army as well as the hand of God. Clings, however, not packing too much of a punch. Just the soul ring and a blight stone for now. There we go. The fight's broken out. You've got an army slash coming out. There will be no chance to slaughter that gets brought down. And Neji repels himself, tries to DP out to get sent into the air and fingered to the ground. The council turning things around bit by bit. They'll find themselves a 390 gold recovery there. And finally, Chen realizes that uh, it is the offlaner, which is Omni Knight, who's doing a lot of work. And he picks up the right screen. He picks up, he picks up the Sator Banisher. And it, it has that purge, he has that purge to work with finally, so they have that counter to the repel here. Negi will, will know that this is happening and he'll be he'll be aware for it next time. Yep, so they do manage to get the tier 1 at the top lane, while Blizzard applies some pressure towards the bottom side. He's gonna get some damage done on the tier 2, split pushing as a Mirana with no real items is a hard job. There's no denying that, but uh, it looks like the council are not prepared, they're not gonna TP in towards that bottom lane just yet. But mid lane, Swifty, he's picked up the blink that. He's ready to fight. He wants to jump behind on the back lines. He wants to go for the lion. Yeah, this is it's the big pickup, really. The only source of damage over time that they have is in the form of the Sand King Sandstorm and, uh, well, the Blade Fury. That Blink Dagger adds so much value. He's got himself a lot more mobility, the ability to escape from very clutch situations. <laughs> Man, 
Mirana is just being a complete pest here, firing arrows into the jungle, stray arrows into the jungle to take down Chen's creeps. But that should be a giveaway that there now is uh, an observer one in the vicinity there. Finally, Swifty does show, show off his bling dagger, so they know that it is there in his inventory, so they should be careful next time the fight breaks, breaks out. They will get themselves this tier 1, the council still unable to contest this, but they are going to smoke up now and try and make a movement there. But BI are already bailing, they've started the TPs, they're going to make it out very, very safely. Swifty even jumping into the jungle, uh, into the woods, sorry, to make a very, very safe escape there. This is very reminiscent of the old school BI that we're used to seeing. They make their enemies dance to their tunes, they make them move around the map as if they were controlling their own minds and in the, in the bargain, they end up out farming their opponents as well. Yeah, and a lot of, lot of credit for this goes to no chance. He rallies his troops really, really well. And that's why people give him so much respect and so much credibility here. Absolutely. Both sides have a lineup that's uh, capable of taking down Roshan fairly quickly. So, big team fights could transition into significant objectives and end up in this really horrible death spiral for the opponents. What is the build on the Mirana? He's tagging up a lot of gold. What does he want to go for? I think the Ags is the item of choice here. I don't see why he'd hold on to money uh, beyond that. But wouldn't you pick up the point booster then? Ideally, yes, but I guess he's just being cautious here. Maybe he's not had a chance with the courier. Maybe that's what's bothering him. Yeah, meanwhile, Jin's also making progress towards his Aghanim Scepter. He's got himself the point booster finished up. But it's still a long way to go till he gets the entire thing. I mean, this game, BI, they do have the tools to de deal with the black dragons and the ancient granite golems, whatever that the council have. Swifty, he's now spotted out the flinks, does get that uh, psionic trap off to slow him down once, but uh, he's not going to be able to get the kill on him either. Flinks is in the vicinity, here comes the Chen as well, but Swifty's just going to blink away. And again, space has been created, you've got uh, Neji farming and pushing up the top lane, while Blizzard immediately moves bottom. His arrow does connect on the Sand King, but uh, it's probably not wise to overcommit here. Oh, that's a Midas okay. on this. Blizzard by the way. Pick, pick, picked up a Midas at 14 minutes in. Uh, he might not have the damage though. And the fight breaks out. Middle lane could be in trouble. The Blade Fury takes down his distraction charges, but the backup is coming. Neji's already here and drops the purification. They're not going to give up this tier 1 at mid. It's got way too much strategic importance to not contest. But yeah, the Midas is not a bad choice actually here for BI. It's good versus the Chen. It's really good because BI has the late game advantage. They want to get to the late game as quickly as they can. And right now, they seem to be able to stem the bleeding. I think this is the third smoke coming out from Animal and his boys. So, if this one's not successful, BI has a lot of breathing room for the next few minutes. They completely dodged the smoke gun from the Chen and they've moved into the Roshan pit. I don't think the council will expect this. But they might catch them on the way back. That is what might happen here. Blizzard might be backstabbed here. They need to start with the Burrow Strike. They had a blink on the Sand King. They start the job, but they don't have the follow-up as yet. He uses the Moonlight Shadow and leaps away. There's the Dust, the Finger of Death as well. Blizzard gets healed up. No repel to back him up. The repel comes too, but it's not enough. He's down for the count. There's the Death Wall being channeled up as well. He's doing a lot of work. Animal is down. Swiftly sees the deal as Jin is now amped up and dropped down as well. Two down on the side of the council, and it's going to be three as Death has nowhere to go but to the grave as well. Neji continues to get chase here. Comes close over the empty center. He's connected on everyone. Neji's going to drop, and it could be the turnaround coming out from the council. But Swifty says no, sir, and brings down the juggernaut himself. There's another dust pop. It's going to be the Clink stunned up, and Amp is there on him as well. The Barasite will get the kill on the Templar Assassin, and no chance is going to drop. Jin with a double kill, even in death, while Go Yolo or Go Home will be able to go home this time. It ends up being a complete massacre here in the bottom lane, but a massacre that favors the council. Yeah, eight heroes did drop in that fight, and uh, BI, they were a little caught out because they wanted to go for the Roshan, but Blizzard unfortunately gets caught out. He wasn't in the pit, he was on the high ground trying to get a long range arrow onto Roshan, and they completely didn't expect that backstab maneuver from the council. It was that epicenter, there. man. Closer's epicenter is what gave the, the, the war cry for uh, the council to get active again. But this is the downside of having such an early Midas as opposed to finishing up your Aghanim Scepter. His damage output was minimal over there and when you go Midas, you usually want to continue farming as opposed to fighting very often. Uh, I mean, he was picked off in the beginning of the fight, so even if he did had, have damage, it wouldn't have really mattered. It was the rest of the heroes which did much of the damage, Swifty, uh, No Chance and uh, Negi, they, they were the ones who did most of the damage in that fight. So. Yeah. Well, a quick look back at Swifty. He's uh, inching closer and closer towards his next item, which I assume will be a Desolator. 
He's got himself one mithril, uh, yeah, one hammer, but uh, I think he's gonna need, uh, he's got a little uh, ways to go before he gets the Tesla online. It is the lull in the game though. No more smokes available on the side of the Dire. One smoke available on the side of the Radiant. And I think it's go time for Beyond Infinity once they get their next big item. Yeah, very surprising to see that no one has stuck the Ancients for Swifty as well because normally BI are very, very efficient about it, but looks like this game, not neither, neither the mid-hero nor any of his supports did the stacking on the Ancients here, so... A little bit of a slower timing from the blink at, into the Desolator. Meanwhile at bottom you've got a fight breaking out here that is a stunned up and destroyed Sand King once more. So while he may have the blink dagger, it's uh, not going to save his life that time around. Slara unveils his own blink dagger with that one. Now I think this Midas is paying off a of Blizzard because he picked up the Midas at around 14 minutes in and already 80, at 18, 18 minutes he's sitting at 2300 gold so yeah, I think it's paying for itself here. Yeah. We spoke about the Desolator on Swifty. There's one coming online for the Slings very shortly as well. So this is going to turn into quite a massacre for either side. Really, both these heroes adept at dishing out large chunks of physical damage within a short span of time. Uh, Klinks is still quite far away though from this. He chose to go for that medallion earlier. So he, he's quite a bit away. He's one missile uh, hammer away almost from that so time here we go beyond infinity gonna look for a kill here on the council the lines are moving in a direction where no one is to be found for the council the council is just gravitating towards the top side of the map where they're going to continue farming up on their cores while the supports stay around the jungle ready to pounce at a moment's notice yeah, and this was the last smoke usage from the side here we go there's the moonlight shadow they're going to jump upon the chen he's called in his army of creeps the chen will fall and so will his creeps one more hit from Swifty would have done it. He blinks away, baiting closer into a borrow strike, and then comes in with no chance. Getting the kill on that wild ring. But Neji, of course, with style points, going in and getting the kills on him on the creeps himself. Three blink dagger carriers blinking in one after the other, just for those chain cre creeps. They don't want a Jin to get away with anything, you know. The Chen down for 10 seconds. They're gonna go into the pit with the armor reduction from No Chance and the armor reduction from Swifty's Desolator. No Chance is gonna look like a squishy toy here. Yeah, and I think they might be able to get it before the contest comes from the council. I don't think they realize how fast this Roshan is happening. They are grouping up though. Will they make it in time? That is the big question. Even if they do make it in time, they're going to be fighting without Chen Creeps. This is such a tall order for them. No, they're not even trying. They have to give it up. And this means that they'll take a lot of structural damage because they really won't be able to contest these fights. Animal, he's going to get jumped upon. There's the Hex onto the Slara. He's been stunlocked, fingered up, brought down. What was No Chance thinking there? Lion even has a blink dagger, manages to get himself out of there. I... That was confusing to say the least. Yeah, I think what No Chance was expecting that Negi will back him up with a heal and a repel, but unfortunately, I, I'm not sure I, I didn't catch it, but oh, uh, I think his blink was cancelled. Hang on, I, I, I think I spotted a blink on the line, but turns out it was just a send back from the Chen. I don't know, I, I, Lion basically disappeared from my screen for a moment. But either way. He does stay alive. Yeah. Meanwhile. Yeah, it looks like it was a send back from the Chen, so he survives on the back of that. Anyway. Yeah, and, and a completely mis uh, mistimed and misplayed death ward there by the Witch Doctor as well. No vision uh, on the Klings. They, they, he gets caught free just with invisibility. That shouldn't be happening at this uh, level of competition here. Let's have a look at the graphs once more. It's still beyond infinity in the lead. 5,000 going their way in terms of net worth. Similar situation with EXP. We've got a movement in the jungle. Jin does get slowed down by the psionic traps as Go Yolo or Go Home decides not to overcommit there. No chance is waiting in the wings, hoping to jump in on someone that walks his way. But it is going to be the Juggernaut and that might not be the ideal target. Dust has been popped, they blink next to each other, the Guardian Angel is there and the Omni Slash has been mitigated. Here comes the cavalry, Jin is waiting behind. Where is that Sand King? Is he going to channel up the epicenter? He's waiting for it. They've gone in, they've brought down the jump, they've brought down the Chen. Sand King Burrow strikes in into his own death. And the chase is still on. Animal gets that burst, the Earth Spike off on just a backline hero. The crush is available for the Slara, but it's not even needed. Swifty going on a complete rampage. You're running straight into the base. As they're even going to get that last Dark Troll Summoner from the Chen. That was beyond infinity with a straight up face rush team wipe. Well, near team wipe at least. Yeah, and what a beautiful blink in by Swifty after that initiation by No Chance. He managed to blink himself in the exact position so that he could get those side blades off. And he managed to catch out two of them. So beautiful mechanical uh, skills being put on display there by Swifty, who is playing the mid-roll mid currently. 
Right, it is high ground time beyond infinity. We're 22 minutes in, and the lineup that was supposed to be pushing is now being pushed upon. Where is the council's defense? Where is the Sand King at his epicenter? He's gonna respawn in a, in a second's time. I don't think the council can uh, go with this fight because they don't really have any ultimates to work with. It is only the Sand King's ultimate that is there online. They will start with a borrow strike. No chance. Gonna be left for dead by the looks of it. While Plinks did snipe the Omni Knight behind. No chance. Did blink away but doesn't get too far. The Claymore Cape keeps him alive through it all. He actually survives. And now they're turning around. Beyond Infinity. Are they overstepping their boundaries here? Maybe not. The silence from Swifty. Melting straight through the Sand King and the Clicks. And now he's gone on Animal. Three hits will seal the deal. As Jin is going to be next in the hit list. He's down for the count. Juggernaut probably not getting out of there either. His blade King will only delay the inevitable. Yeah, it is. Swifty who's jumped in on death, they're going to secure this kill no, kill no matter what. Man, Swifty's putting on such a such an amazing show of display. He, he's absolutely crushing it. They're going for the racks. It's going to be one lane of racks at the very least. It might even be one set of racks and a mid tower for the side of Beyond Infinity. Yeah, those side blades are just tearing straight through the council. There aren't any creeps here though, so that could be a deterrent for Swifty and his boys to keep doing this. <laughs> He's actually placing traps deep inside near the fountain yeah, They know this has happened though because they did see him. But look at that, he's still not lost his Aegis. That's how ahead he is. He's absolutely crushing. He's 8-1 and 8. That's what he's sitting at right now. Some insane display of skill here coming out from Swifty. Alright, Blizzard. Now he's got himself a Blink Dagger along with the Aghanim Scepter and that Midas. That Midas is paying massive dividends this game. Yeah, he's going to pick up the blink and the agonims very, very quickly. Alright, they're going to go back in to finish what they started on the top side of this map. There's the sun coming out for no chance. There's a repelled, refractioned up Swifty who comes in to take what is rightfully his. Yeah, the line is basically one melt hit for, for Swifty. That's, that's what he has to do. It's one strike. Alright, no chance, gonna go to work on the range barracks, closer, keep an eye on him because he is the most crucial tool here for the council's defense. They aren't able to go in just yet, Neji goes in, the stun, the arrow actually clipped on the Sand King, no chance, he's gonna amp him up, so now they've got vision of the Sand King regardless of where he positions. And that means that Beyond Infinity will claim barracks without actually overcommitting. Mirana actually leaps forward here. It was, uh, he had his ball. big dagger so he knew that he could walk away. We're yet to see a gem pick up on Beyond Infinity. Oh, there it is. The Witch Doctor gonna pick up the gem in the in the base. Yeah. And now, now the council will be playing really, really in the dark. Blinks will have no safe place to go. He'll have no safe place to farm. He, he'll have no safe place to scout for the enemy team. And I really fear for him. This Blinks pick has just not worked out, unfortunately. And yeah, you can see, see, you can see it reflect on the network charts as well. It's not really sitting very, very. High up there. Yeah, Templar Assassin really has been stealing the limelight of this game, but it feels like a full on team effort coming out from Beyond Infinity here. The Council, while it may be looking grim here, is it over is the question. Perhaps it is. With the Juggernaut down for 50 seconds, they don't have one of their cores to defend this base. And yep. BI, while they may not have an Aegis, are going to be running straight through the middle lane. That one meld hit basically took 3 4 of the life. From the juggernaut. So basically, There's the slaughter again jumping in. Oh man, Swifty and Blizzard. They tore that lion a new one and they're not done just yet. Well, they're just gonna come back and play Discipline Dora, bringing down the buildings. I, I don't think the council can fight this anymore. With a repel on Swifty, he has basically the license to do whatever the hell he wants to. That's exactly what's happening in this fight. Another day, another crush, another death. The council. They are crumbling at the moment. I think they know it as well as we do that this one is over. Even the Witch Doctor refuses to die with the Omni Knight on his back. Closer completely whips on that epicenter. And with that, it'll be a five-man wipe and possibly the game won here of this best of three series. Yep, absolutely. Swifty, he's going absolutely ham on the enemy heroes. And finally, Animal, who is the captain for the council, calls the GG. Yep, they have tapped out, but... Uh, Fear not, Council fans. This is a team that has shown a lot of prowess in the past. That's what they can come back stronger in game two. It is a best of three, and it isn't an elimination match. It's a winner bracket final right now, so the loser will drop down to play versus Invisible Wings in a best of three tomorrow. But stay tuned. Game two is coming up shortly. One thing: if uh, the Council. Could